I'm planting model pine trees to create a fantastic, beautiful mountain forest on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you've been following this channel for some time, then you have noticed the bare mountain scenery that typically is behind me whenever I shoot these opening segments. And many of you have commented on that scenery over time, asking when I'm going to work on it again. Well, today is the day. Now, I love creating model railroad scenery, but the challenge that I have faced with this particular scene is that much of it is basically vertical. I built it that way intentionally to use two layered mountain ridges to create a sense of great distance in the mountains in a scene that is only less than two feet deep. The challenge was to find a way to plant pine trees on this vertical scenery in a way that made it look realistic and that created that sense of distance. And the answer that I've discovered is wire armature trees, and I'm going to show you how I do that in this video. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how I made 100 twisted wire or bottle brush pine trees in a single weekend, and those are the pine trees that I'm going to be using in this project today. Now, if you haven't seen that video and you want to see how I made these trees, I'll post a link to that video at the end of this one so you can check that out. But for now, let's go get started working on some mountain scenery. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. This is the scene on my layout, which I call Beggar's Canyon. Yes, that is a nod to Star Wars, as I am a Star Wars fan, but that is as far as the analogy goes, I promise. Previously, I had painted this area a ground color, a light brown, and I applied real dirt texture. I had also modeled the rock at the top of the mountain, thinking you'd be able to see this rock point through the treetops. I had touched up some light spots with brown paint that tended to stand out a little too much to my liking. I didn't plan for the viewer to be able to see much of the ground through the forest, but just in case you could, I wanted to correct this problem. I started by stippling some medium gray paint over these brown areas. I didn't need detail painting here, I just wanted to create more of a general sense of granite and tone down the brown paint a little bit. Again, I didn't plan for the viewer to be able to see much of the ground here. When the paint had dried to the touch, I started planting trees. In the previous video about how I made these trees, I was asked numerous times what I planned to do with the tree trunks. For the bulk of the forest where the trunks will not show, I'll simply bend them into this nearly vertical scenery as I am about to demonstrate. When I come near the front of the scene where the trunks may be visible, I have another plan and that'll be the subject of my next video, so be sure to watch for that, and if it's been published by the time you watch this, it'll be linked at the end of this video as well. As you see, I drilled holes to plant these trees using a pin vise and a drill bit that was very close to the size of the twisted wire trees. For me, that was a 1 16th inch bit. Now, be aware that if you have plaster scenery, as I do, the plaster will dull drill bits, so I recommend picking up some inexpensive bits at your local hardware store. To prepare the trees for planting, I first brushed away any loose flocking over a trash can. I then used needle nose pliers to hold and bend the trunk at an angle where it would go into the scenery base, and I used some wire cutters to cut off the excess length. The angle that I would need varied based on where on the mountain the tree was going to be planted. In some places, the tree trunks were perfectly straight, in others they had a slight bend, and in others they were nearly 90 degrees. But I could adjust this angle and get the tree straight after it was planted. I glued the trees in place using Beacon 3-in-1 glue. This is a great adhesive for scenery as it sticks to nearly any surface, it's foam safe, it holds quickly and it dries invisible. I've come to use this adhesive on all kinds of scenery material and I highly recommend it. I'll include a link to the Beacon 3-in-1 glue in my Amazon pick of the week in the description below this video. 
To plant the trees, I would simply squirt some of the Beacon 3-in-1 glue into the hole that I had planted. It has a very fine tip, so I could squirt it right into this small hole. And I would also put a little bit of the adhesive on the end of the tree trunk itself, and then push the trunk into the hole. At this point, I simply started layering in trees, offsetting them as I moved down the mountain to try to create a random forest appearance. I used my shorter trees here in the rear of the scene to create a sense of distance and forced perspective, and you'll notice that I didn't always brush off all the excess foliage, and some of it fell and began to pile up on the scene. I also had not colored the plaster before applying it to this scene, so some of the plaster dust piled up over time as well. Thus, from time to time, I ran a vacuum to pick up the excess debris. I also used some ground colored paint to touch up white spots from the plaster dust as I went. Hey, let me pause here for a moment to say that if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. You'll notice that you can see just a hint of the ground color through the trees and places, but only a hint and my rock at the top of the peak is not visible at all. As I worked my way down this very vertical part of the scene, some of the lower trees I cut the back part of the tree off so it would fit tightly up against the trees behind it. You can't see that I did this and it made for a very nice tight forest look. When I had reached the bottom of the valley between the two ridges, I started planting trees at the top of the nearer ridge. This was where my concept would either succeed or fail. As I planted more trees on the front ridge, the depth between the two ridges really began to pop and I could tell I was going to love this effect. I think it looks great on video, but it looks even better in person. It really does create a great 3D effect of distance that will really make the trains running across this trestle stand out as it looks like they are running through the depth of Colorado Rocky Mountain scenery. I'm always amazed at how little real estate 100 trees covers when you're planting them close together like this. So now I just need a few hundred more trees to finish the scene. Now if you'd like to see how I made these pine trees and other model railroad content, check out the links on your screen. Remember that Amazon pick of the week in the description down below and join me on Tuesdays as I bring you even more great model railroad videos and I'll see you on the next video. Tim Lizzie?